Hey there guys and gals, this is Tim Schrock from Design Build Solutions bringing you today's Tech Tip Tuesday. Things have finally slowed down enough for me to get up to speed on creating my new template for Chief Architect Premier version X9. There's some new uh, tweaks that are that they've come up with in version X9 and I like to try to not just import ex export import from the old version um, because it just makes for a cleaner um, a cleaner setup I think uh, but it, it that means for me it takes some time to really get things set up um, correctly and and part of it too is that as I go along and I, I do some plans and I notice hey I want to add these um, defaults, then I, I forget to add them to my, my setup and I think, oh, I should, I should add this, these defaults to my template and I don't get around to it. And so while I'm doing my template with each version, I know I can add this up. Anyway, so here's, I'm just going to go quickly through what I've got um, set up to do that. I want to show you guys, I'm going into my uh, default settings uh, icon. You can get that through, uh, let's see, I don't remember how you can get it. View. Anyway, it's this wrench right here um, in the icon. I don't remember how to get it through the menu file. So, <clears throat> to start off, to start with, here's my process. I go with the default layers. I create layers for every different type of um, plan that I'm going to create, and I create my CAD layer for that type of plan, my text layer, and my dimension layer. So I have um, my CD plan, which is for construction docs, you could call it architecturals or whatever. So I've got CD plan, CD plan two, and CD plan three because sometimes I'm going to create, you know, um, my my basic architectural layer, and then I'm going to do a at quarter inch scale, and then I'm going to do a zoomed in specific, you know, vision of say this bathroom, and I might want it at um, a half inch scale. Or, or one inch scale. So I'm going to create my CAD layer for the appropriate uh, plans. I've got CD plan one, two, three, electrical. I've got an existing plan layer because in remodeling I want to see where the existing is. And so I have a layer specifically for that CAD, for those CAD lines. Um, I have a layer for particularly for my section views called flashing lines. Um, and I set that up as red, light, red color um, twice the line weight and dashed. Um, foundation plan CAD lines, um, because sometimes like if, if we've got a, uh, got, uh, you know, a living space uh, shown in the basement and I want to show a specific foundation plan that's not the, that doesn't have the walls in it, um, I, I create it with this. Um, I created framing dash ceiling plans floor plans and roof plans. Um, I have CAD lines for grade lines that you saw in a previous um, Tech Tip Tuesday video, how I do my, my uh, elevation views with my grade lines. And so there's that CAD layer. Hidden lines, also in my elevations. HVAC lines, uh, kitchen and bath um, plans that I might have. Um, Kitchen and Bath 2. Now this is a new thing that uh, Chief X9 is coming out with. This is out of the box, Kitchen and Bath 2. I probably won't use it, but it doesn't hurt to have it here. Um, CAD plot plans. Uh, plumbing plans. Post down. I use these post down and post up for to highlight um, where specific point loads are coming down or coming out, out. So I start with the roof and work down through the top floor down to the all the way down. And then as I copy those down to each floor level, I just uh, 
change them to the post up layer and um, that way if a post is landing in the middle of nowhere I know I've got to pick that up right with a beam. Roofs, uh, wind bracing I'm adding this this time around because uh, we're having to add a lot some floor some plans for wind bracing specifically and then as well as my work limit line uh, I'm going to give that a red color my work limit line and I also want all of my all of my uh, layer sets to have the work limit line be a phantom line so I'm going to change this check modify all layer sets and I'm going to change this to my phantom line uh, line type. I'm going to scroll up here and select the phantom line which is a long line, two dots, and a long line. I'm going to give this again 36 line weight so it's twice what uh, typical lines are. So that's my CAD layers. Then I'm going to go into my dimensions for each of those as well. Now I don't have a work limit line layout set so I'm not going to create a dimension line for that um, but I do have layout sets for CD plans, again CD plan 2, CD plan 3. Um, I don't use plan 3 very often but sometimes I, I want it. Uh, electrical existing plan uh, dimensions, sometimes I have, have that. Uh, foundation dimensions for the foundation plan, framing plans, HVAC, kitchen and bath, plot plans, plumbing roofs. Scrolling down to my text. Oh, while I'm going through here uh, another previous um, uh, um, Tech Tip Tuesday video talked about how to show my my uh, sliding barn doors open and closed. So I'm going to show I, I created my fixtures interior closed and open um, layers already in my template so I don't have to do that step again next time I want to show it. It's right ready for me. And then I go to my text. Uh, text callouts, text markers, and now here's my my layout plans again. CD plans 1, 2, and 3, electrical, foundation, framing, floor, roof, HVAC, plot plan, etc. Once those are created, um, I am, I click OK. And then I go into my default settings here, and I'm going to go start through my text styles. So I have many different text styles. Um, I, I know it sounds like textiles. I'm saying textiles like the clothing textiles we wear. No, text styles. There we go. Um, so I have a one inch scale style, half inch scale, quarter, one eighth, two inch, three inch, three quarters, three eighths. Um, default label style, half inch default label style, default text style. I've got plot plan styles that are 10 foot scale, 15 foot scale, 20 foot scale, and 30 foot scales. Um, room label styles, half inch room label styles, because I typically don't, I'm not going to usually put a plan that has the room label on it with anything but those quarter inch and, and half inch um, scales. My my one, two, and three inch text styles are typically going to be sections. If I happen to do a plan that's at one inch, um, I probably won't have the room labels on anyway. Um, so there's that. That's text styles. And then rich text styles. Same, same thing. Now these rich t text styles I created some because I want I actually want the rich text to go on a specific layer, not just the scale of text, but I want it to go on this specific layer. So my rich text style is going to be uh, four inches tall, which which is what I've created for um, my quarter inch scale plans. I want I want the text to be just smaller than one eighth. I think personally I think one eighth inch is very big and busy. Uh, printed one eighth inch text is is pretty big and busy, uh, so I I I'm at two thirds of one eighth of an inch, whatever that is. Um, so then I go into appearance and I'm going to put this rich text framing ceiling on the te text framing ceiling layer, which is why I started with my layers. 
first. Now I just go select the right layer for that. Same with floor. Now my ceiling framing is going to plan is going to look different than my floor framing plan. So if I have one story, uh, or I'm, I'm on the top story, um, I, I may want to see a floor plan because half of it might be ha let's say I'm on one story of a one and a half story house on on first floor you know half part of its floor framing part of its ceiling framing part of its roof framing uh, so I want that flexibility then HVAC plans NKBA plans um, that's that's a typical thing or a default thing from chief now I've created my plot plan rich text defaults again for 10, 15, 20, and 30 inch scales. Um, depends on how big the plot is and what size paper I'm going to be printing on. Plumbing, roof, and again my wind bracing. Same for text. All that stuff there. Callouts. I'm doing the same thing. Markers. Arrows. Uh, now arrows don't have layers, so I'm just I'm just creating the di several different types of um, scales that I may want to uh, may want to use. Now this isn't one twentieth. I should just make this one one to twenty feet scale, and I'm going to edit that. And for 20 inch scale, I'm going to do um, a 15 inch arrow. Now this, I'm not quite done with arrows yet. And so I wanted to show you what I'm doing here. I'm going to copy this one to 20 foot. And I'm gonna make it, uh, come on, arrow over, make it one to 30 inch and remove this copy there. And I've got the right arrow style that I've selected that I want. And I'm going my 30 inch, I want a 22 and a half inch size arrow. You might say, how do you know that's the size you want? Well, I'm going to put a link in the comments um, to a spreadsheet showing you how I do it, uh, how, I, how I have calculated um, the size of text and arrows that I want. So I just copied and created a 1 to 10 inch scale as well here. 1 to 20, 1 to 10, 1 to 30. All right, so I'm going to click done and save this bad boy and I'll pull it over my spreadsheet. So here's my text scales. What it is is here's the scale that I want uh, the plan to be in, plan or elevation or section, uh, a quarter inch equals a foot. So the scale here, you shouldn't have, you should not have to deal with these three columns. The scale is one quarter, the base is in inches, 12 inches. One quarter equals 12 inches. One quarter inch equals 12 inches. Half inch equals 12 inches. Three quarter inch equals 12 inches. One inch equals 12 inches. Inch and a half equals 12 inches. I, I actually am not creating a default in my template for inch and a half. But there's the two inches, three inches, one eighth, three eighths. One inch equals 10 feet, so that's one inch equals 120 inches. 15, 20, and 30, you know, 360 inches. All right. Uh, this column scale multiplier for one eighth inch is. Um, just an internal calculation that I needed to create how many how many quarter inches are in one are in 12 inches 48 of them how many quarter inches half inches are in 12 24 of them then I don't want it to be a full eighth of an inch when printed I want it to be two-thirds of that um, so quickly I'm gonna say one eighth times two-thirds, is that right? One divided by eight times two divided by three. So when printed, it's going to actually be 0 0.0833 inches tall. 
if I put the text size at 4. Okay, so there's your answer. If you change the font multiplier, say if I wanted the font to be, be a one inch, one eighth of an inch when I uh, uh, print it out, I can change all these to number one. And you need a text size of six. Now I want my arrow size to be three quarters of an inch, three quarters scaled three quarters down of the text size. I don't want the arrow size to be the same as my text. So I just, all the arrows are um, three fourths of the text. Make sense? So um, I'm just going to copy that and put this two thirds back in here. Okay. So that's the text size and then the arrow size of what I want. That's where I get these uh, sizes from. So once I've pulled up the text, the callouts, the markers, the arrows, then I'm going to go into my dimension defaults and propagate all of those. And um, lastly, the last couple things I need to do is layer sets, which, uh, and then annotation sets, which is a lot of fun as well. But once I have my layer sets created, my annotation sets are easy because all I have to do is select my dimension default. So here's my half inch scale, quarter inch scale, eighth inch scale. Let's say I'm gonna create, I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna name it one inch scale. I'm going to change it to dimensions. Well, I haven't given my dimensions yet, have I? But as soon as I change that, I'll have, I'll have my one inch um, dimension default and just be able to uh, select that all the way down. Dimension, rich text, text, callouts. There's callouts. I know callouts, markers, arrows. And I'm going to just use the active layer set for this particular annotation set. All right, so I'll do a uh, I'll do a, a subsequent video of how I use annotation sets, um, and then lastly, I just have to create my wall. I, I believe it just uh, my wall defaults. Um, Yeah, because I have specific wall defaults that I use for um, that I use for remodeling and and denoting you know types of walls, um, whether they're existing walls or new walls, whether it's a two by four wall or two by six wall or half height wall or all that good stuff. We'll get into that. Um, so. Tech Tip Tuesday is definitely a behind the scenes type of thing, not as glorious glamorous, but it definitely helps you speed up, helps me speed up um, the process of designing and communicating that, uh, not only to the homeowner, but also to the uh, crews that are building these projects for us. This is Tim Schrock from Design Build Solutions. Thanks for watching today's Tech Tip Tuesday. Uh, if you have any uh, comments about this tip or any other tips that you ideas that you might have that you want to see please let me know that and we'll try to get that worked in for a future tech tip tuesday uh, check out our website designbuildsolutionsllc.com for more information about designing and remodeling uh, thanks for watching have a wonderful day